As a trainer at SeaWorld, you do night watch shifts periodically, and that is uh, where you come in at about 10 p.m. And during that time as a trainer, I did witness these hordes of mosquitoes. I didn't really think much about it. And it wasn't until later on when I uh, kind of was, uh, I got exposed to a couple of publications in the literature that showed pretty conclusively that uh, at least two captive killer whales uh, were killed by mosquito-borne pathogens. It was at that point when a light bulb kind of went off in my mind and, um, and I started kind of thinking about you know, some of the factors involved. And one of which is simply that they spend so much time just floating around motionless. So these animals, as they do kind of float motionless in the Florida sun and the Texas sun, they become sunburned. We know that sunburn and ultraviolet radiation in general is a strong immunosuppressant. A lot of the animals have really poor dentition or teeth. The teeth are broken, their teeth are ground down, uh, they're missing, or they've been drilled out. And so um, we know through the literature that poor dentition uh, causes animals to become immunocompromised uh, and more susceptible to various types of pathogens, bacterial and viral alike. Uh, I suspect that probably a lot of other killer whales have been killed by these, uh, these mosquito-borne pathogens. And this is gonna be a more and more of a problem as we move through time. In the wild, they live roughly human lifespans. In captivity, statistically speaking, even when you get rid of the relatively high infant mortality data, these animals, for the most part, are dead by the age of 10 or 15 years. In reality, we don't really know what the causes of death have been because there's been no oversight. So while the record shows that, um, you know, there's been a lot of sort of suspicious deaths caused by sort of, you know, viral pathogens or whatever, we don't really know uh, how those uh, pathogens entered their bodies. The problem is, is that SeaWorld does the necropsies by SeaWorld personnel and they do all of this in-house without any oversight. When SeaWorld controls the necropsies and SeaWorld controls the information, we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. There's all the incentive in the world to, to cover this information up. There is more evidence, uh, mounting evidence, that this whole thing called captivity just doesn't work out for the animals. 